Oh yeah, right. My Attack on Titan Season 2 review. Yeah, so this show is pretty insane. If you haven't checked out my Season 1 review of Attack on Titan yet, I pretty much suggest that you go do so now and then come back to this video afterwards because Attack on Titan Season 2 pretty much amps it up to 100 when it comes to every aspect of their show, characters, world building, stakes, animation, the overall narrative. Everything gets a huge boost here. And it was rather obvious that the Attack on Titan Season 1 anime was pretty successful over here in the West. And this was the season that I personally started watching the show live, or I guess week to week. To give you a brief recap of what's going on here in this series, seeing how it's the first of its kind here on my channel, there's simply too much to talk about when it comes to Attack on Titan. There's so much going on at such a fast pace that it simply needs to be broken down into season videos instead of an overarching series video. This series has also been pretty incredible to make seeing how this is my first rewatch of the entire show, which gives me a whole new perspective on what the hell is actually going on here. But as well as watching it with my brother who is a first time watcher of the show, which obviously means that he's pretty much mind blown throughout every episode of season 2 and pretty much going forward throughout the entire series. But that's enough of these words, we're here for Attack on Titan. So Erwin, take it away. As I said earlier, Attack on Titan Season 2 is pretty much on an entirely different scale now than Season 1 when it comes to its progression. And unlike Season 1, Season 2 is in random linear episodes, rather written and animated in a way where us the audience and the characters respectively are shown and told more questions than answers having to solve problems and risk their lives mostly in the unknown, and then slowly the characters and us the audience are relayed and told the information that was so direly needed in order for anything to make sense. But you'll soon learn that that will become the standard writing formula of Attack on Titan, not only in this season, but in every season going forward. So get used to it. We also split our characters this season, which was a pretty brilliant writing tactic from Isayama. It allowed for the show to be highly focused on a lot of the characters that we weren't able to truly focus on in Season 1, like Krista, Ymir, Connie, Sasha, and Bertolt. Well, kinda Bertolt. Yeah. <laughs> and taking a deeper dive into who these characters were before joining the Scouts, their motivations for going, and what keeps them driving in the face of giant man-eating titans as well as having a way to progress the absolutely insane plot that is not only unfolding for season 2, but as well as the overarching narrative of the entire show in a way where it seems like its characters and us the audience have just the right amount of time to digest everything that's been dumped on us until it's time to blow our minds yet again. So what happened in season 2? In the aftermath of the season 1 finale, with our large crew of characters finding out that Annie is the person controlling the female titan, and with the damage caused from Annie and Aaron's titans, our crew finds out that there are huge colossal titans hidden within the wall, with only Pastor Nick and his church hidden behind Walshina apparently knowing about the titans' whereabouts. With this mind-boggling revelation, Armin and Hanji, with some minor help from Pastor Nick, soon deduce that the walls of Maria, Rose, and Sheena are all made up of hundreds of thousands of colossal titans, using their special hardening to make up the walls. Walls that have been protecting humanity for the past hundred years, and with the newly found knowledge, they soon come up with a plan to use Aaron Titan's hardening to seal up the hole in the wall in Wall Maria. With all of this happening, you flash back to most of the rest of our cast of characters that you haven't really come to know and love yet. But you will. When encountering Titans outside the wall, and set out on an expedition to warn the remaining people, you're then introduced to what looks like another intelligent man-controlled Titan. One that might be the most intelligent out of all of the ones that we've seen so far. The Beast Titan. A huge 17 meter titan covered with fur, hence its name, and it's soon discovered after the first couple episodes that it can have the power to control titans, as well as being able to talk to us humans. Yeah, you heard that right. Yeah. <laughs> with Pastor Nick finally deciding to talk about some of the secrets within the wall, the two main storylines within Season 2 start to coexist and mesh in a way. And while you would think that this will start to answer some of the setup and some of the questions that were introduced in the earlier part of the season, and that they were going to start finally paying off, then you're highly mistaken. 
It's just simply more questions for us, the audience, and our characters when it's revealed that while yes, the members of the church knew about the Titans within the walls, their biggest and most important mission has been to keep an eye out on one of our scouts, a young girl of royal descent named Astoria, who is revealed to be our calm, nice, and lack of screen time, Krista. With our remaining scouts, including Historia, Reiner, and Connie, being forced to hold up inside of an abandoned castle right outside the walls, they're strangely attacked at night by Titans, which is something that has been deemed impossible with the knowledge that we have of the show. And with that, Attack on Titan throws you its second ever major reveal, with Astoria's closest friend, and again, lacking of screen time, Ymir, reveals herself to also be a Titan shifter, transforming into her Titan, which is later revealed as the Jaw Titan in order to save Astoria from the oncoming waves of normal human-eating titans, eventually holding off the upcoming slaughter until Levi and the rest of our scouts show up to whip some titan ass. Respectively, of course. And with all of that, our crew is now back together. But then, we enter yet another flashback, showcasing how Hanji and Armin have determined that Reiner and Berthold must have helped Annie in their previous Season 1 attack on Eren in what some consider to be one of the most emotional, shocking, and pivotal plot twists Attack on Titan has ever seen, Reiner, back in the present, in a very much nonchalant way, tells Eren that he is the Armored Titan, and that Bertolt is the Colossal, and how they were both sent here from a different place in order to destroy humanity behind the walls. With everything now being in the open, with Reiner basically openly admitting that he and Berthold were the reason that his mom was eaten by a titan, our first epic level titan fight of season 2 starts off between Eren's attack titan and Reiner's armored. But... it's not that much of a battle. Yeah. <laughs> Against trained and battle-tested Reiner, Eren basically stands no chance, and with the rest of the scouts not being able to do a single thing against Reiner's hardening, it seems as if all hope is lost. And well, it is. Bertolt and Reiner end up defeating and stealing Eren away from the walls, even after a knowledgeable buff from Eren when remembering and learning off the fighting techniques when he was fighting Annie's female titan. With humanity's biggest traitors now having Eren and with Ymir on their side, they begin to make their way back towards Reiner and Bertolt's hometown. It's still spoken to be unclear in the show. With the intentions of Eren being unknown, but with the intentions of regaining control back of the Jaw Titan, one of the nine intelligent titans in which Eren and us, the audience, learned through backstory that was stolen by Ymir when she was just a simple man-eating titan. And yet another absolutely insane reveal, you learn that titan powers are passed down through the spinal fluid. It can only be transferred when becoming a titan yourself and eating the person with said power. By the end of season two, we're in our last major push of the mission in order to retrieve or steal Eren back from Reiner. Again. With our scouts having no weapons that can inflict damage onto Reiner's armored skin, it again seems as if all hope is lost. But this time, it's actually not. With Commander Irwin hitting Reiner with a hard flank while being pursued by Titans, oh right, and losing an arm, let's not forget about that. Being unable to fight due to the fact that he has to protect Eren from the scouts, Reiner soon has to make a decision on rather protecting Eren is worth losing his life. And well, Eren gets free reuniting with the scouts on what looks like a pretty mind-boggling but happy ending to season two. But wait, another reveal you say? There's no way. But of course there is. With Reiner desperately trying to fight back, Mikasa and Eren find themselves separated in the smoke, coming across no other than the titan that ate his mother. With Eren frantically trying to bite himself to become a titan, Honest attempts to defend the two while Mikasa gives one of, if not the most emotional and character-breaking moments from all of Attack on Titan that we've seen so far. With Hanes being killed and Mikasa delivering a heartwarming emotional speech, Eren awakens an ability where he can control all nearby Titans, sending the Titans to devour the Titan that ate his mom, and then sending them all to attack a still raging Reiner in order to lead to their escape. With Ymir deciding to stay back and help Reiner Bertolt, in a shadow silhouette of a long-haired dude with glasses being the one piloting the Beast Titan, Season 2 comes to an end. Yeah, this show is pretty epic. While I pretty much covered the two main storylines of the show for this season, there's still many, many things that will come back to affect the overarching narrative of the show like Connie's village and Sasha reuniting with her father. The reveals of Reiner and Bertolt, 
Ymir's Titan, and how one can inherit the powers of Titans, as well as Krista being revealed to be an illegitimate daughter of a noble family, are just the stepping stones of what's to come and, in my opinion, set up the success of the show as a whole going forward. It's a pretty risky writing and storytelling technique that Attack on Titan likes to go with. It's a show that leads with a bunch of setups and many, many questions before you'll ever get the answers or the payoffs to them, sometimes not even in the same season, which truly leaves the audience in the exact same boat as the characters that we're watching. It leads to a really engaging watch when you're watching with our characters that have the same reaction to a certain reveal that you are yourself, and the reveals are plentiful. While season one set the stage, season two was an extreme upgrade to the show and every single quality ranging from its characters to world building to stake setting to animation. When it comes to my brother, unfortunately there's not really much to add here. He was just truly engaged and interested the entire time. The show does a pretty incredible job not to foreshadow its major reveals, so we had no idea Titans were people or how to inherit a Titan or that Ymir was a Titan. It was all just pretty much awesome to watch. You're not really watching this video if you haven't seen Attack on Titan, so there's no need for me to really recommend the show to you. But I would anyway. As well I would say is that if you have a stubborn homie that won't give it a watch, keep bugging them. It's worth it. If you liked the video, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel to check out some of the other videos I've made. I could have already talked about your favorite movie or TV show or, in this case, anime. And I'm always down for some conversation in the comment. And I'm always down for some conversation in the comments. My socials are in the description if you want to troll around on Twitter. But otherwise, that's all the words I got for you today. Bye.